So this question is based upon the provided diagram here. The information provided here lets us know that the riser tread formula is 2H plus D equals 25. So I always write down equations when they're given in the question. We know that H is the riser height. We know that D is the depth. So question 18 says, some building codes require that for indoor stairways, the tread depth must be at least nine inches. So that tells me that D must be greater than or equal to nine. Again, I'm using a translate word problem strategy for number 18 and writing down any quantitative information. So the tread depth must be at least nine inches. So D is greater than or equal to nine. And the riser height must be at least five inches. So H is greater than or equal to five. According to the riser tread formula, so this formula right here, uh, which of the following inequalities represents the set of all possible values for the riser height that meets this code requirement? Okay, perfect. So the code requirement is basically here. It has to fit the riser tread formula, and we need to have values of D that are greater than or equal to 9 and values of H that are greater than or equal to 5 simultaneously. So let's try answer choice A. So what do we think about answer choice A? So answer choice A is pretty much saying that H, the value of H, is between 0 and 5. Now, we don't like that, or I don't like that answer. You shouldn't like that answer, because we know that H, according to the information provided in the question, H must be greater than or equal to 5, whereas here we have H is less than or equal to 5, okay? So A is gone. No need to even test that answer out at all. Choice B, which actually says H is greater than or equal to 5. It's going to be a very tempting answer for a lot of students because it matches what we see here. But it's actually not going to be the correct answer for this question. Here's how you know. So the question asks for the set of all possible values for the riser height. So if H is greater than or equal to 5, that's a lot of numbers, right? There's a, there's a lot of numbers that are greater than or equal to 5. So if I were to, for instance, say, hey, let's say H is equal to 100. What happens if H is equal to 100 when I plug that into the riser tread formula? Well, I'd have 2 times 100 plus D equals 25, which is 200 plus D equals 25, and D equals negative 175. And again, the other part of our, um, our code requirement here is that D must be greater than or equal to 9, in this case, D is negative 175, so that's the reason why B cannot be right, because any number greater than or equal to 5 that doesn't work makes B incorrect, right? So hopefully that makes, hopefully that makes some sense. Um, so H being greater than or equal to 5, and that's the only limitation, is not a good answer for us. So A is gone, B is gone. So choice C says that we have basically H is between 5 and 8, which we can test out as well. I'm going to test this by saying H is 9, okay? Because in essence, I know that this part is correct, right? I know that H has to be greater than or equal to 5. What I don't know is this part here, that H has to be less than or equal to 8. So I can test it out by saying H is 9. So when I say H is 9, I get 2 times 9 plus D equals 25, 18 plus D equals 25, and subtract 18, subtract 18, what I end up with is D equals 7. And once again, if D is 7, right, that means H cannot equal 9 because we want D to be greater than or equal to 9, whereas 7 is less than 9. So for that reason, um, C actually looks pretty good because then this is kind of saying, hey, 8 is that, like, that maximum point. I'm going to take a peek at D. D says that H is between 8 and 16. Well, we already tested out H equals 9, and we know that it can't equal 9. And since 9 is within that range, I'm going to cross D out. This makes C the best answer by default. But what we could do, so again, D is gone for the same reason, right, because it cannot equal 9. If you're not confident with just choosing C, you could always say, well, if I were to say H is equal to 6, which is within the range of Five, between 5 and 8, then what I have here is 2 times 6 plus D equals 25, and 12 plus D equals 25, and D would equal 13 once I subtracted 12 from both sides. And yeah, 13 is 
right? It is greater than nine, so that's a good D value. And it's the only answer choice that when I plug a value in for H that is within the range provided, that I get a D value that actually does work. So that's the reason why choice C is the best answer.